Hi, I'm Steve Kidd, Associate Director at Quadrant Building Control. Today, I'm going to talk about some of the key fire safety issues that come up when assessing building regulations applications for warehouse buildings, including industrial units and small commercial startups. The first issue is means of escape. Large warehouses are often beyond the scope of the standard guidance given in approved document B in terms of travel distance. Therefore, it may be more appropriate to consider alternative guidance, for example, BS999 or even fire engineer principles. For more complex projects with long travel distances, time to escape calculations and smoke modelling may be needed. If the end use of the building is known at an early stage, designers will need to consider the fire risks associated with that use and any processes occurring in the building and design the fire safety provisions accordingly. Fit out layouts, including automated systems or racking layouts for high base storage, can have a significant impact on travel distance. At the shell stage of many developments, there is often no specific end use proposed. In these cases, the fit out plans will need to be reviewed at the time a tenant comes on board. Fit out works will require a separate building control application. In warehouse and industrial buildings, office accommodation is usually required to facilitate the operation of the warehouse. Office accommodation may be considered as ancillary to the warehouse, depending on the size of the office in comparison to the main building use. Typically, office and warehouse accommodation are separated by 60 minute compartmentation. We are frequently asked about when second staircases are required for means of escape from office accommodation there may be situations when single stairs are sufficient. This is subject to single direction travel distances typically being no greater than 18 metres in accordance with approved document B. The intended occupancy of the office space must also not exceed 60 persons. The size of office accommodation will ultimately be the driver for a second staircase and we typically see secondary protected staircases being introduced at the opposite end of the accommodation. Where office accommodation is compartmentalised from the main industrial or warehouse use, it may be acceptable under the requirements of B3 internal fire spread to provide an open staircase to the warehouse instead of a protected stair, on the basis that occupants are escaping into a different 60 minute fire compartment. This should incorporate a wheelchair refuge space with communication points at landing levels. Bear in mind that furniture layouts and internal rooms could further increase overall travel distances and that locating reception areas at the base of single stairs would not follow the guidance stated in the approved document. Means of escape from the roof of large warehouse buildings is something which is important but can be overlooked when considering the general means of escape from the internal space. Roof areas are vast and lend themselves to the installation of plant equipment which will require inspection and maintenance over the life cycle of the building. Safe egress from the roof can be achieved by internal cat ladders down to protected spaces, such as stairs or unprotected areas into warehouse space, or a combination of these. Several routes may be required depending on the size of the building. Whilst travel distances can be increased for escape in open air, if ladders and stairs are dropping into accommodation spaces, then internal travel distances need to be taken into consideration. Escape distances must be calculated to final exits from the internal space. Buddy systems are often introduced within strategies to allow communication between roof occupants and those inside the warehouse. If an incident were to occur, this communication offers the best opportunity of navigating the safest and quickest evacuation route. External escape routes may also be considered from roof areas where mobile elevated working platforms are considered to give alternative routes. However, the safe transfer from the roof to the working platform must be considered. Regardless of the strategy used, it's important that escape from the roof areas is thought out at an early stage and a detailed access and maintenance strategy is created for assessment. One of the most common questions we get asked is in relation to the protection of roof members where compartment walls are formed to create separation between different use classifications in the same building. 
or compartment walls provided to separate two different organisations. These walls can be constructed in many different ways to achieve the necessary fire resistance. However, it is the detail between the steelwork supporting the roof and the vertical wall where most variations occur. Guidance suggests that if roof supporting members pass through the walls, then fire protection may be needed to delay distortion at the junction. It is important that the detail is discussed and reviewed as early in the design process as possible, as input from the structural engineer will be required to determine how structural steelwork passing through the compartment wall could impact on its stability. It should be noted that thermoplastic roof lights are not acceptable within 1500mm of compartment walls, regardless of their fire classification. The relationship between buildings on the same site should be considered in terms of external fire spread from building to building and adjoining boundaries. It is important to consider relevant boundaries, for example land ownership boundaries and notional boundaries created between buildings on the same site and the external walls of the units accordingly. Typically, for large warehouse and industrial buildings, this is reviewed in accordance with the guidance presented in BR 187 and considers the height and width of the elevation facing the boundary and its distance to it. The further the distance of the boundary, the greater the allowable and protected area, this being the area of external wall with no fire resistance provision, for example, glazing. Factors that can affect the amount of unprotected area allowed include when sprinklers are incorporated into the building design and internal compartmentation, either between use classification within the same building or when compartmentation is required to separate different organisations. The guidance also gives opportunity where buildings are close to boundaries to consider unprotected areas which are widely spread across an elevation giving small allowances for escape doors and glazed elements. Access requirements for firefighting are dependent on building size. Requirement for perimeter access for firefighting ranges between 15% of the perimeter for a small building up to 100% for buildings with a large aggregate floor area. Access around the building is generally required for a pumped appliance However, in storage buildings where the mean height of the roof is greater than 11 metres, access should be provided for a high reach appliance, where the relationship between the building, walkways and pavements around the perimeter and overall road widths must be considered. The same does not apply to industrial buildings unless multi-storey with a floor greater than 11 metres. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel and any other questions, please just give us a call on the number on screen. Thank you for watching.